Good afternoon. I'm very honored to present to you my research study on the parametrization of Egyptian fractions. Egyptian fractions is mean expre expressing a fraction into a sum of distinct unit fractions. And in which to begin with, I will first introduce some existing open problems for the generalized erdos schultz conjecture that exists a solution to the finite equation of a fraction expressing in three distinct unit fractions. And we will replace A by M in our paper and denote it to be the M if equation. And also, another problem is to identify the shorter expansion length with the given fractions, in which shorter expansion length is the minimum length of a fraction expressing in the distinct unit fractions, and in which, however, the method to identify the shorter expansion length is still remains open. And in our research, we devise a parametrization in which we can apply our variables onto geometric models, and also we have a generalization. And also we achieve exhaustion of, our, of the two terms and three terms Egyptian fraction equations, also with the help of our congruence generation theorem. And also we have some application of our parametrizations. And in our paper, we will assume n to be a prime number. And now I will first introduce our parametrization. There exists two geometric models for the two term Egyptian fraction equations, which can apply n, x, y onto the figure, and also satisfy the two terms Egyptian fraction equations. And also the parametrization for two terms Egyptian fraction equations are famous. And by induction, we can also obtain the parametrization for three term Egyptian fraction equations. But however, it's not symmetric and not natural as we fix x to be a parameter. And also the geometric models for the three term Egyptian fraction equation will be used in our paper. And for the parametrization on two term Egyptian fractions, the equation in proposition 2.1 can be found by using ratio of length. And we observe that by letting the length in the figure to be AB and also applying the equation, we will have the final parametrization in proposition 2.2, which is obvious that the parametrization is symmetric and also there are two variables only. And in figure two, it is proved that the sum of the reciprocal of the three circle radius are equal to the reciprocal of the inner circle radius, in which we observe that by letting the length in the figure to be ABC, we can obtain the coordinates of center N in terms of AB. And but however, we found that the formula of the other two circle radius are tedious in terms of AB only. And now, imagine rotating the figure with center O clockwise, and also we replace green circle with the blue circle, and we replace AB by BC. We, by similar arguments, we can obtain the formula for the blue circle radius to be BC over N, and in which if we rotate the figure once more, we can obtain all three formulas for the circle radius. And also the first equation in proposition 2.5 can be found using Heron's formula. And the, and the rotation reveals our symmetry of our parametrization. And for the two-term parametrization, it is proved that the product of AB and also A squared and B squared are integer. And as we want to transform our three-term parametrization into a dual finite system, we found that the big ABC are equal to the small ABC with the square root sigma, which all three sigma are the same and also they are square free. And this is the final dual finite system. And we also extend to the general form of our parametrization, which by similar arguments, we will have the final dual finite system, and in which there are L variables only. And now I'll move on to the how to demonstrate how to achieve exhaustion of our solutions to the two times and also three times Egyptian fraction equations. We call our two term parametrization. Once we are given an n, we will factorize n squared into the form of a squared b squared. And with a loss of generality, we will assume a smaller than or greater or equal to b, and in which we will arrange a in ascending order until a reaches n because of the bound, and by which we will input all values of a, b into the parametrization and obtain all x and y, which, for example, if n equals to 7, then for a and b, it is either 1, 7, or the square root of 7. And we will input all values in the parametrization and therefore obtain all values of x and y when n equals to 7. And also, we develop theorem 4.1 in which there are three congruences that whenever n satisfies any of them, then n has a solution to the m e three equation, in which noting that type 3 will be absorbed by type 1. And we found that there are two types of sigma only, in which because we don't have to consider any sigma equal to n to the power i for any i equal to for any i greater than or equal to two, because sigma is square free. And therefore, by theorem 4.1, once we're given an m, we will have an infinite list of congruences, which will be demonstrated in the following slide. Once we have a fixed m, we will input the m into type one and type two. 
And then we will pick sigma b prime and a in ascending order starting from 1, and also factorize f for type 1. And then we will have two type 1 congruences. And we will collect all of them and also reorganize them in ascending order, and also remove some sub-residue. And here is the final complete list of congruences that whenever n satisfies the congruences, then n has a solution to the me free equation. And I'll demonstrate how to achieve exhaustion for the three-time Egyptian fraction equations. Once we are given a prime n and also fix m, and also with a list from previous slide, we will check whether the prime n satisfy any congruences from the slide. If it's satisfied, and it is the congruence is from type 1, then we will recover sigma b prime and f. If it is type 2, we will do the similar arguments. And therefore, we will have all values of ABC, and therefore have all values of XYZ. And by our congruence generation theorem, when M equals to 4, which is the earliest trust conjecture, we have a Python program that worked reasonably well when compared to a world record. And also when M equals to 4, we found that all residue of our congruences are quadratic non-residue, which means that square numbers will escape from our list, but however, square numbers are not prime. And I will now move on to the application of our parametrization. Modet proposed a list of congruences that whenever n satisfies any of them, then n has a solution to the MEV equation when m equals to 4, which is the earliest conjecture, which means that the possible residue of the potential counter example are as shown. And the ratio of those escaped residue to the total number of reduced residue is around 3%. And the green highlighted congruences are the ones that he didn't mention further. And if we extend our congruence to up to mod 20, which is as shown, the total number of reduced residue and also the excavated residue will increase. But however, but however, the increased rate for the excavated residue is lower than the total number of reduced residue. And therefore, the ratio will decrease and it is around 1.8%, which gives an evidence that if we extend our congruence list to infinity and choose a bigger class of congruences, then the ratio will eventually tend to zero. And as we assume n to be a prime number in our paper, we will compare the total number of pers po potential counter example with all prime numbers. And also we use the specialized Merton product to prove that the density tends to zero, which is a reference from a paper about analytic number theory. And in which, we, by our parametrization, we have explicit forms of fractions which can be, can be expressed with a given shorter expansion length up to five. Noting that they are not all fractions in such length, but however, there are infinitely many fractions in our form. And also, semi-perfect number and also Egyptian fractions have a, is a well-known relationship, it, which is performed by proposition 5.1. And in this section, we will discover and study a special type of semi-perfect number, which requires the pro proper factors to be called prime. And by our parametrization, we will have a restriction on S in which a square root is bounding the product of alpha 1 to 4 and also sigma. And also using our parametrization, we have an upper bound on the prime factors and therefore have an upper bound on S, which means that the true set containing all S are finite and we can use program to find them out. And our, uh, and our result is that we can find all co-prime semi-perfect number in four factors by using our parametrization and also our box game. And to conclude, our parametrization is obviously symmetric, and the variables can be naturally observed in the geometric models. And also we can transform the MEV equation into congruences. And also we can achieve exhaustion of solution to two terms and also three term Egyptian fraction equations by using our parametrization. And using our parametrization, we develop a congruence generation theorem, in which also help us to prove the prime density of the potential counter example N on the MEV equation tends to zero, and in which we also, by using our parametrization, we found the explicit form of fractions that with a given shorter expansion length up to five. And also we can find all co-prime semi-perfect number expressing in four factors by using our parametrization. And by using our parametrization, we believe that further result can be studied in which is to form a covering system to prove the union of all of co our congruences that provided. And also by using our parametrization, we can bound the largest prime factors of the co-prime semi-perfect number, expressing in more than four factors. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.